I've worked on leadership for four decades and a bit. And I just don't see very many of them. Rebecca is here, um, once again, to ask me all sorts of searching questions about why I have not found leaders I've been looking for other than two who stand out in more than 40 years. There's your challenge, Rebecca. Thank you. Well, first of all, I want to know what do you mean by leaders or leadership? Uh, it sounds like we rehearsed this, but in the case, well, I'll fall back on my most significant um, leader by writing, if you like, the leader I've read most of and really respect most, Warren Bennis. He's now the late Warren Bennis. Uh, what a fantastic writer and wonderfully telegenic, did great videos. His definition of leadership <clears throat> is the wise use of power. Now, that's a bit general, but it's value laden. What is wise to one person isn't somebody else. Hitler would have thought he used power wisely. Uh, Donald Trump thinks he uses power wisely. Uh, I don't know. Alex Ferguson thinks he uses power wisely. So, so I recognize that there's a lot in that definition, but the wise use of power, and that to me excludes just about 95% of people who call themselves leaders at all levels straight away. But I, I'm talking about leaders that I've <clears throat> actually worked alongside, not that I've just seen on telly for three minutes, that they've actually worked alongside and observed closely. And there's been probably hundreds, thousands of them in, in 40 years, two stand out, more than two should. Yeah, yeah. So what what skills do you see that leaders need? Whoa, crikey, I'll get my book out here in two of the 300 and so that there are. I mean, all right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not about listing, is it? I, I've got so much stuff on leadership. Different people got different views. You see the same things. The same issues recur. We keep hearing about empathy and engagement and we and drive and foresight and perception. We can come up with those lists. I suppose it's such a good question. I'm thinking of my feet and I'm not very good at that. Um, tell, tell, ask it again so I'm, I'm, so I'm tuned into it. Okay, I, I shall make it slightly easier. What, <laughs> what, what are the top three skills of leaders? Oh, I don't know. I'm not, sure, I'm not even sure I'm going to answer that. I'll probably go back to answer it the way I was going to, because I don't want to come into a, a sort of like, it is a set of specific skills. I'm not sure it is, because it's nuanced. What makes, okay, then, so what makes a leader different to a manager? Okay, well, I, I, again, I'm trying to find a way to answer your question, which is the way I really want, and, and to focus on the two, because I'm thinking about what makes the two people that I think stand out as leaders mm. stand out against hundreds of other candidates that I've worked with and alongside, certainly dozens that I've actually worked with. Those two stand out because they were, they were very different, for one thing, and I think sometimes being a, a leader is about being prepared to be different. Because if you read a book on leadership and try and be the leader that that author wants you to be, that ain't going to work. And I think one of the things that is the two had in common, only two uh, in common since 1982, is that they seem to suit their context or they created for themselves a place in which they could be effective in that context. So I don't think it's about the possession of skills. They are different skills. They're in very different environments. One was in local government um, and the other was in heavy vehicle um, sales and leasing. So very different environments. And I think if we're talking about skills, it's again it's such a good question you ask, it genuinely is. I'm going to answer it in terms of perhaps the skill that those two use really well was adaptation to circumstance and not just the, the imposition of a skill set they've used somewhere else that was effective there. They seem to have this intuitive ability to use what they've got in the circumstances they're in. Yeah, and I think that's interesting what you say, because like you say, I think there can be a number of different skills that are useful, but being able to apply them in the right context, then, is that more accurate? I think so, but I didn't think that until you asked me the question. Uh, <laughs> so thank you once again. You know, I reflected on this. I've written uh, thousands of words on it in the learning log since 1987. But you just asked me a question, which has caused me the first time to think, Leadership in context is so important because surely one of the problems we've seen with football leaders, with political leaders, with business leaders is they bring to the role they're in what has worked for them previously. And that's why so many of them fall over because they haven't sucked in 
their environment. They haven't truly understood the differences, the very significant differences as well as similarities. They've come in and thought, yeah, I'm a great leader. I did all this the last four organizations. I'm going to do it here. And it all falls to pieces because what they didn't do is what those two did well. And that was spend the time it needed. And in one of them's case, six months. For six months, we thought, when's he going to get around to doing something big here? Because we know he does. Um, he's only 37 or whatever it is. And, um, you know, we're an organization at that time of 17 and a half thousand people, this local authority. Surely now he's going to shake us up. He spent a long time understanding a complex organization before then the big stuff started to happen. In the case of the other person, it was a more familiar environment and a much less complex one. And he was able to get running more swiftly, but he still didn't treat any one part of, of that federation of organizations um, as the same. He said he, he knew he had to, to understand it to be effective in, the, in that different context that he's been in them before. Mm. So there's something around understanding then, isn't there, What from what I'm getting there, that an understanding of the nature of the people that you're working with or the organization or the industry and stuff. And would you say... I mean, we often think of leaders as being the top of an organization mm. or whatever. Can we have leaders lower down oh, in yeah. an organization? Oh, yeah. And that's where most of them are. Because if all we thought of as leaders are the people at the top of the, of the pyramid, then we're not talking about very many people, are we? But in an organization of 10,000, we haven't just got one, we've probably got, well, up to 10,000 because leaders don't have to be leaders by role or by function. A lot of the best leaders I've seen, yeah, the best, I'm not, I just don't think they're as good as these two, have been leaders who aren't even in a leadership role. They might not have a team leadership role even. They're just people that people follow whose advice they think is worth taking, whose direction they're prepared to take. British Army's good at this. Um, when, when you come out of Sandhurst and you're, you're, a, you're a second lieutenant with um, no experience, it's your sergeant and your, your corporals that you say, hey, what do you think we should do here? Because you've been doing this for, for, for 16, 18, 20 years. I started this week. And, that, and the British Army encouraged that um, because this book that you can't see um, called Serve to Lead, um, is the origins of servant leadership. Never mind what um, Greenleaf was talking about 30 years later, Winston Churchill wrote the first step forward to this um, after the war. So, so leadership is, is big, it's wide, it's not just at the top. I just don't see very many people doing it well. So you mentioned something there about a willingness of other people to follow there, that it makes people want to follow. So I'm gonna come back to sort of an earlier point in terms of we often, put people in managerial positions mm -hmm. now being a manager and being a leader is not the same <laughs> True. so what's what would you say the key difference of there and, and why are not all managers good leaders well crikey this is worth pursuing in its own right another time because it's big um, and a few things i'll say about that and i'm glad you've raised it um, managers and leaders different distinct two very different sets of skills, context, whatever. One is not more important than the other to me. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty darn important to be able to lead an organization to where it needs to go. It's also pretty darn important to manage a function, a process to ensure something works. For me, because I'm a not particularly bright person, I look for simple th answers to things. A leader is someone that changes things. A leader is someone who almost by definition is gonna lead people, whether it's three people or 300,000 or 300 million or whatever people. A leader is someone that leads whatever group of people are leading to somewhere different and therefore it changes things. So therefore they gotta cope with a skill set that is all about how people feel about a change or not. A manager by definition is almost a maintainer of something. It's not a changer of things, a manager manages. Now that could be managing something to look in a different shape. But it could very well be to manage something in exactly the same way it's always been. And that's OK. You don't want everyone to be a leader. You want people who can manage well as well as people who can lead well. They very often aren't the same thing. Some leaders don't manage people well. They don't manage their, their top team well. Other managers will never be a leader, nor have they any aspirations to be. Yeah, I think it is interesting. And I think sometimes people get confused or mix up leaders and managers. Because they are, like you said, I think they are a very different skill set. And you do need both. So it's John Cotter thinks so. John Cotter knows a lot about leadership. John Cotter's got an excellent video out there. Um, how is management different to leadership? There's lots of stuff out there. Warren Bennis has got a list of 12 things. 
in the way in, in the way that managers are different to leaders. One of the ways that stick in my mind is managers do things right, leaders do the right thing. Ooh, I like that. I like that. <sighs> Oh, yes, I'm wondering if that's a good point to leave that on because I think you're right. This is a big topic. <laughs> a lot more. Is, is that code for you're you're wobbling all over the place on this? And you are. I, I am sorry <laughs> um, because you're right. There's so much in here, but I think what we what we've drawn out of this just to sort of hit on some of the most pertinent things for me is I'm glad you raised the question that led me to think about context. I think leadership in context is so important. A leader from somewhere else doesn't necessarily be an effective leader where they are and vice versa. Sometimes leaders might have been awful, but they find the place to say, look at me, this is the place that I can be effective in. So it's not all about proving how useless you are. So the two leaders that I focused upon both had that intuitive thing. They seem to know that this place that I'm looking around is different to where I've been before and I have to be differently effective. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I think it's important to recognise that, isn't it? So you can't automatically be a good leader in one place and be a good leader in another place. I think that's the key thing. Thank you for leading me there. 